What's going on everybody? My name is Austin Ariel. Welcome back to the channel. Today I have the most interesting hot hatch that's not truly a hot hatch, but it is. Today I bring you the Hyundai Kona Night Edition and this is probably going to be one of the weirdest cars you're ever going to see and the reason being is look at it. It's got an exotic color. It's got an extremely exotic wheel set, a wheel set that you're not going to expect. And then on top of that, it's got a punchy little turbocharged engine that will actually get up and go. But today, we're going to take a look at this thing. I'm going to show you what you get for this beautiful car, okay? Because this is actually sort of a rare beast. Don't know if I should call it a beast, but I'm going to call it a beast. It's a pretty cool car. I'm very excited to have it and I couldn't have done this without Ed Voyle's Hyundai here in Smyrna, Georgia. They're the ones that have actually supplied this vehicle for me to review. Of course, with the help of Reed Glenn, you guys remember him. He's been in a lot of my Hyundai and Genesis videos. If you guys need any help locating a Hyundai or Genesis, the link's gonna be in the description below. So let's get to it. Really quick, just wanna run it by you guys. If you guys are new to the channel, welcome. If you like what you see, definitely hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and hit that bell in the upper right hand corner. That way you can show support for the channel. I definitely appreciate it. And it also allows me to keep doing what I'm doing. So in saying that, also follow my Instagram if you haven't. The link is down below, but it's just my name, Austin Ariel. So thank you again for your support. Let's get back to the video. Let's start off with the front end of the Kona here. So for one thing, you're gonna notice that Hyundai's famous split lighting design is definitely on this vehicle. As you can see, you've got your running lights up here, and then this is actually gonna be your indicator up here. This is gonna be your headlight unit. So you've got your low beams here, you've got your high beams there. This is a standard headlight unit. Higher trim level Konas actually do get a full LED headlight set, which is really neat. You do see that you do have your amber reflector here, and then this piece right here that goes over the wheel into the bumper, it's kind of a textured satin plastic piece, which actually looks really, really cool. Adds a little bit of durability to it. I'm kind of interested on in why they didn't just paint match it to the car. Maybe they want to contrast. I'm unsure, but it still looks really well, especially against this gray paint. You do have this plastic piece here, kind of a honeycomb finish, but it is not a functional air dam. It's just a plastic decor piece. So let me know what you guys think of that. I'm kind of torn in between currently. Down here in the bumper, you have that same exact color pieces you're finding up here, down here, but make note, it does go all the way across the bottom, even though it's split by this plastic insert here on the lower part of the bumper. The grill here has a uh, Hyundai's becoming famous grill shape, which is kind of a mushroom, diamond kind of shape you see it's stretched up top kind of angular and then it gets smaller at the bottom so it kind of reminds me of a giant wedge tornado but that's me being all geeky and scientific but overall the main portion of the grill is actually hollow which is really cool to see because i can't imagine they need too much air to this turbocharged motor but i'm not a scientist so i trust their engineering but the bottom part here is actually completely solid it's not hollowed out but it does carry the same design with these little etchings all the way through and then your Hyundai badge, which is also actually hollow, which is kind of cool, is actually up here in chrome, and it actually is really big. One thing I'm a little confused on, this. It looks like it's going to be an intake for the engine, but it's just a solid piece of plastic. Kind of curious of why they did that. I don't know, but this, I feel like the car can do without it. A little bit of overstyling. What do you guys think? This is the single coolest part about this car. These wheels, which are exclusive to the special edition, are Ray's branded wheels. I was told one of these wheels is about $800. And this is on a Kona. A Hyundai Kona has a Ray's wheel. You know who else has a Ray's wheel? The Nissan GTR and a lot of other race cars out there but here it is on a Hyundai Kona. And talking about design, all gloss black, 
surrounded by a Goodyear tire. I think it looks really good. Night Edition makes sense. They're blacking out a lot of things. I do like that they kept the black lug nuts too. Just finishes it off. I'm kind of interested. I'm assuming Ray's just has red center caps. But if they had the option of black, I feel like I would have gone with black and just kept it all a uniform look. But overall, it's a really nice wheel set. It is going to be a 235 width tire, 45 series sidewall, and these are going to be 18 inch wheels. So these are Eagle Touring Goodyear tires. So I expect this to be a somewhat decently grippy vehicle to drive, but we'll find out soon enough. I want to just point out real quick that at the bottom here, you do have this gloss black accent, which complements the bottom of the car really nicely. And you do have gloss black on the mirror caps there. So it sets off the whole blacked out scheme of the car, including the roof rails up top and then the surrounds for the window. So just make note of that when you're actually looking at one of these in person. Going to the back of the Kona, as you can see, the split lighting tradition continues out back. Your main brake light units back here you are gonna have a huge reflector housing back here with your indicators built in and their amber, which is super cool. I actually love amber lighting on cars, especially when they're in a red surround. Your reverse light is actually gonna be built in back here. And then that same satin finish that you're finding up front, you have that down here, followed by the Kona badge and giant chrome letters back here, the Hyundai badge and giant chrome letters. And then you do have a 1.6 T badge on the back of this car because this does have a 1.6 turbocharged engine in there. It is a four cylinder, but I'll go over that in a little bit. Back here, you do have a spoiler. It is body painted. You do have this really, really textured plastic piece. Almost uh, reminds me of like a bed liner, but it does have these streaks back here. Interesting design detail. I guess it gives it a little bit of character, but you do have heavily tinted glass in the back with your rear wiper. LED third brake light housed in this huge rear spoiler. Overall clean design, nothing too specific here, but I will say that this individual one is also equipped with a lifestyle hitch. So if you do want to put like a bike rack or something on there, this car specifically is equipped. That's gonna be optional from the factory. Not every Kona is gonna have that, so make note of that. And then you do have a backup camera. Back here, I'm actually gonna take the film off real quick, just because it was a little foggy backing up outside of that you've got that satin piece down here not a diffuser but it's just an insert so it looks really cool but it also adds some durability to the car we are in the interior of the all-new kona night edition so let's talk about what we got going on here so steering wheel it is wrapped in leather you do have this satin finish here in the bottom you do have your bluetooth controls on the left hand side your cruise control on the right hand side it is fully telescopic so you've got your lever here on the inside and the gauges you see they are outlined in that blue color with white font which is pretty customary among the Hyundai group in the middle you do have that display that shows you fuel economy you've got your system settings for your lane departure and lane keeping assist and then you can see user settings there I just like to scroll down and keep it on the digital speedometer and then over here, you do have a touch screen. As you can see, you've got your radio controls on the left-hand side. You do have a physical knob, which is really nice. And then on the right-hand side, you will have other features like a home button. You got your phone button, a favorites button slash a custom button, and then a setup button there. This vehicle is equipped with the Infinity Premium Audio System, which is really nice. So you do have that speaker system in this car, which is really cool. So you do have the tweeters, you've got your main speakers, etc., etc. But there's nothing particularly interesting about the audio system itself outside of it obviously sounding good. Uh, this is, of course, the protector for the screen when it comes off the truck. I'm not going to take it off, but it's still reactive through the actual film itself. As you can see, you've got your Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. This looks to be Hyundai's older infotainment system doesn't seem like it's updated just yet but it is actually very responsive even through this film so no need to worry on that and everything still looks fairly modern which is nice so like i said android auto apple carplay you get your phone connection bluetooth etc etc you do have sirius xm in here so make note of that i know that's actually becoming rare in cars nowadays but you do have that and then your climate controls are standard fare here fan speed temperature and your directionals ac bun defroster 
nothing particularly interesting there. You do have a storage pocket here, your auxiliary port, your USB, and then your fast charge USB here, which is really cool because I like the fact that it's actually outlined in blue with their lighting, and then a 12 volt power outlet down here. You do have this neat little storage pocket here, which is really nice. So if you want to put your phone there or anything like that, you can. Go down here, you got a leather wrap shift knob. You do have a button behind it, so when you want to shift gears, you can. Heated front seats, which is really nice. Downhill brake assist, and then you can see you got your drive mode selector button, which the only two drive modes you have are normal and sport, but have no fear. Why would you want to drive anything except sport in something like this? Now, other things to make note of, there is a lot of plastic on the interior as this is one of their more economical vehicles that they offer at Hyundai, but it also feels really nice. It almost has that kind of basketball-ish texture as you can see, it's kind of this rib texture. And if you look really closely, it's like a hexagon. So it looks really nice. It feels pretty good as well. I have no complaints, but one of my favorite things is right here, the handle and the lock button here are both gloss black. I've never seen that in a car and I think it looks really, really cool. So I'm actually gonna give a big kudos to Hyundai on that one. And then on the left-hand side here, you do have your blind spot detection button. I'm gonna turn that on. And then you do have your lane departure and lane keeping assist functions here, traction control, and then of course illumination buttons. And then your basic switch gear here for your windows. Both front windows are auto up and down. The rear windows are just standard power windows. And then you do have power mirrors. They're manually folding. So if you're curious about that, that answers that. Up here, it is a standard mirror, but you do have their Blue Link system as an option on here if the camera will focus. There we go. So you do have that on option for this car. And then up here, you got your standard map lighting. So you can just press this, turns it on, and then you do have your sunglass holder up there. One thing I do want to make sure you guys see are these seats. These are, these are cloth seats, but look at this pattern on the inside. I really think they took that from Volkswagen because Volkswagen is known for having their craziest patterns in the interior. This looks super cool. It gives it kind of a young, modern accent to the interior, and I think it looks really nice. And I like that right here. It's actually kind of a little insert. I think it looks really cool, really clean. I think it's a job well done from the Hyundai group. And then it is a power seat with lumbar support. And then you can see you got sport pedals down there. Like I said on the door card, plastic speaker grill, you got the Infinity audio system. So I'm in the back of the Hyundai Kona and this is technically a compact. It might even be a subcompact. Let me know in the comments. I, I get kind of confused with those individual classes of vehicle, but as you can see, the front seat is actually where I would sit, and I'm five foot nine, and leg room, it's a little tight, but I definitely have room with my knees, though if I hit a bump or something, I might hit the seat back here. Not a big deal for me. I will say this car does have a raised roof line, so I do have a lot of headspace here. Even though you can sit three people back here, I would imagine that it would be tight. I think I would stick to only two on each side, but if you have to, just for short periods of time, you can cram somebody in the middle here. So, but let's see what else is going on back here. In the back seat, you're not gonna find anything really crazy back here. Just a standard back seat. You do have map pockets on both seats. Do not have vents for the rear. And then this vehicle does not have a sunroof, and you can see the map light up there as well. It still has the factory uh, film over it because of course this car has come off the truck recently So but obviously at time of delivery these cars have that taken off and you see the gloss black is actually carried into The door handles in the back too. So just really cool attention to detail there very very impressed And then on the seats you see you have these levers because these seats do fold Down flat if you want them to and in the middle here. I know a lot of people get curious you do expose two cup holders slash an armrest. So you do get that in this model as well. And make note, the pattern does continue here in the back seats, just like the front. In the back of the Kona, you're gonna see that you do have this cargo cover here, which is pretty nice if you wanna hide anything that you're storing back here. But trunk space is a little bit tight, but this is a compact or subcompact. So just make note of that if you're looking at one of these, 
and then I will pull this up here you can see you do have storage and then if you actually pull up on that you do have your spare tire underneath so storage isn't necessarily the biggest strong suit back here but if it's just you you can make do there's plenty of space if you're going grocery shopping or anything like that plus you've got tie down so if you need to use it for utilitarian things you can fold the seats down and fit whatever you need to back here all right every one so we're driving the hyundai kona and i know the first thing that y'all probably thought when i said hot hatch is there's no way this thing is considered a hot hatch and i get it you don't think it should be but let me explain okay when you think hot hatch you think of the what golf gti you know um the focus st slash rs etc and yes those are decently potent vehicles especially the rs and even the volkswagen golf r this is no different and the only reason why i say that is because this thing does have a turbocharged 1.6 and even though the power output doesn't match those other vehicles that i stated this car is also not as big as those okay the kona is technically again correct me if i'm wrong i keep going back and forth between subcompact and compact but i think this is actually a subcompact so for a subcompact having an engine like this i think it's worthy of a hot hatch title because you can have fun and you can go around the twisties and things like that in this car and just have a blast you know this this Kona is $28,000, right? MSRP, right? I'm not going to talk on, you know, rebates or anything like that. That's up to you guys. But this thing is $28,000. And it looks so cool. This color, Galactic Gray, with this powertrain, the 1.6 turbo, and the fact that this thing has Ray's wheels on it raise wheels i don't know of any car outside of the gtr that came out of the factory with raised wheels if you guys do let me know in the comments because i really do want to know like i want to know some other cars that might have a wheel set similar to this so let's talk about the power output of this powertrain right so this is a 1.6 turbocharged four cylinder 175 horsepower but it does have 195 foot pounds of torque so this can be in the wheelhouse of people who like the fiesta st from ford and even though this one does not have a manual transmission it does have a dual clutch transmission which fits this car perfectly because it's perfect for somebody's first car or even a performance buyer if you want to go around like twisties and things like that you have that super quick shifting transmission to go with it i'm actually going to put it in sport mode now and you can have fun with this thing i will say steering is on a more comfortable note right it's definitely a little less direct as you'd expect but when you put it in sport mode like i have it in now steering gets heavier it's decently direct this isn't going to be a track day queen or king but it gives you that sports car like feel i will say when you put in sport mode there's a decently drastic difference i'm gonna push a shifter to the side so i can roll my own gears this thing has a good amount of torque <laughs> holy cow <laughs> this thing is so cool it's so fun and i think it looks super cool this color reminds me of my k5's wolf gray though this color is called galactic gray and it's just so it's so interesting right you have the seat pattern that looks really cool, really reminiscent of old hatchbacks, especially the old VWs back in the day. Hyundai's definitely trying to cater to a market that's very strong, especially in Europe. In the US, I won't speak on that just because a lot of purists are going out of the game, but this car can definitely aid in that, which is really, really cool. This thing is so peppy and fun. This has the fun factor that you'd want from a vehicle. And I and I really do think that, okay? I will say, the only thing that I'd be worried about is just rear seat space. Holy cow. That was third gear. 
this car has pretty much the same amount of power as my K5 in a car that's a decent bit lighter. Put that in perspective. And this transmission, by the way, shifts actually very fast. I do think Hyundai Kia Genesis, their dual clutch transmissions are actually really nice. And I think that might have to do with Albert Bierman being one of the lead mechanical engineers for the Hyundai Kia Genesis group. So kudos to them. Um, but let's talk about ride comfort, right? So this is a decently comfortable car. The suspension isn't too firm. It's not too soft. It's kind of just in the middle. Road feel when driving it, you get a sense of where the car wants to be, but it's it's not gonna be like a sports car per size vehicle. Brake feel is really nice, it's comfortable. It's not too touchy, which is actually a really big benefit because a lot of cars, especially new cars, their brakes, even before you get them broken in, they're just too touchy, but this is not that. Outside of that, power delivery is actually very good. The transmission is super smooth. Dual clutches and low power outputs don't usually mix together, but in this application, it's almost flawless, to be honest. You don't get any vibrations, jitters, anything from the motor or transmission. The car just knows what it wants to do, and it does it very efficiently. Another thing that I will say though, hold on, there's somebody actually stopped in the middle of the road here. Interesting. One thing I will say here is that fuel economy numbers are pretty average. So with this being a peppier four cylinder, interstate MPGs, you're looking at about 32 miles per gallon, which for a car of this size, I'm a little surprised at that, but I think because of the higher output, you kind of sacrifice a little bit, but 32 miles a gallon, that's still pretty good, no matter what car you're looking at. But this car is a specialty car anyways, in a generic sense, don't hold me to the guillotine about that. So there are some things that you have to give and take. One thing I am excited about is the fact that this seems to be kind of a lower trimmed Kona, but you still have a really nice sound system in here that Infinity sound system is really good. So you can tell that Hyundai is trying to cater to those younger generations to keep them excited about the car they're in. So they don't have to step up to a fully loaded model of any car to get a nice sound system. Cause that's what a lot of people want. So other things I want to talk about visibility in this thing, the rear window kind of on the smaller side, not even gonna lie, but you got blind spot detection in this thing. So you don't have to worry really about visibility. It's not a big deal. I think even if you get this for your kid, first time car, etc., they'll still feel perfectly safe in this thing. So I'm very, I'm very happy with this car and the way that it is set up. I'm very interested at in the fact that Hyundai put raised wheels on a car like this. I thought that was a very ballsy move. But so fun this car is very fun extremely fun especially in sport mode um, but I think this car this limited edition trim should be a hit I really do think that it should be and I hope that it is because cars like these need to be built to cater to a very small group of people and I think this car will do exactly that so I think it's got a few shortcomings, but overall, I think this is a really good car. For the money, I think what you're getting is a deal only because the raised wheels are so expensive if you went aftermarket or anything. So to do something like that on this car, I think it makes sense why this car is $28,000. So for a specialty car like this, I think the price is definitely justified. I think if it didn't have the raised wheels, it might be a tough pill to swallow for a car of this stature. But again, you get the raised wheels for probably a huge discount on this car. So again, thank you to Ed Voiles, Hyundai here in Smyrna, Georgia. Thank you, Reed Glenn. You guys always hook me up. So I'm gonna link them in the description below. So that way, if you wanna check out their inventory or even this car, 
they've got I think two of these maybe three of these on the lot so that way y'all can actually take a look for yourself and again thank you guys so much for watching if you like what you see definitely subscribe to the channel hit that bell in the upper right hand corner that way you get alerts every time I release a video and then on top of that give this video a thumbs up if you like it if you give it a thumbs down I'm sorry I'm trying my best so like always thanks again and I'll see you on the next car review